Welcome back tubers. So what I thought I'd do in this video is cover off a couple of points from my last video. Add a little bit more in there just to make a little bit more sense in what I was meaning and what I was saying. But also the key part of this video is going to be looking at the data from the my 4.8 kilowatts that I've got on the house roof over the last month. It's coming into winter in New Zealand and some of the data is quite interesting and lots of things to think about when charging a power wall or using a system of that size to do um, to charge the power wall as well as run the house. So first of all, this part of the video will cover off um, some comments from yesterday or the, the last video. Now, what I meant by covering the whole roof and solar panels, it really depends on where you live. Obviously, if you live in a climate that has snow most of the winter, then adding solar panels isn't going to make much of a difference. In fact, it would be a waste of money. So in that case, you're probably better off with a wind turbine for those winter months. Now, obviously, I live in Auckland, New Zealand, um, very much the same as Australia and other parts of the world where you don't really have that harsh weather. The worst we get in, in Auckland is um, rain and just cold, wet days, kind of end on end, and then we'll have a sunny day and then it'll kind of be rainy or wet for a couple more days. That's kind of our winter summed up, at least in the North Island. So for that being said, my last video kind of makes a little bit more sense um, in, when you take into consideration where I live. So obviously I want to have as many solar panels as I can to be able to charge things like the power wall, to be able to run the house and to be able to do all those, those things. So that's why I was saying that adding a few more panels to the house makes a lot of sense, obviously if you live in a, um, in a climate like we do um, in New Zealand. Other parts of the world is going to be different, so obviously things are going to change depending on where you live. But at least for possibly half the world, adding more solar panels, um, given the cost, makes a bit of sense. Now obviously, have a look at the next part of this video because there's some data in there and you can kind of come, uh, you can kind of see where, what I was meaning and, um, and what size system you might need. So what I'll do right now is I will um, bring you into the computer room. Now what I thought I'd do is to show you the 4.8 kilowatts that I've got connected to grid tie on the main house because the majority of people will only have one inverter or one system they won't have multiple systems and obviously in the garage and other bits and pieces they'll normally have one inverter some solar panels inverter and a battery storage system. So this is about looking at the size of the battery system or, and how it corresponds to how many panels and the size of the solar system that you might have because after looking at, uh, as we're getting into winter time, and as we're kind of now looking at some of the data as we're, as we're moving into winter, we're starting to see how much the solar panels are producing on a day-to-day -day basis, obviously based upon the weather, but how little of solar we're getting versus the summertime, and how much of a difference that might mean to how many solar panels that you put on the roof, um, as per other parts of this, this video and the previous one. So let's have a look at some of that data and let's really kind of understand what we've got and what we're producing versus how much we've got left over because that what the, the amount of power that we've got left over will govern how much power we can actually um, put into a, a battery storage or a power wall and things like that to actually charge that back up again. So as we kind of have a look at this spreadsheet that I've got in front of me, what you'll see, and if I just move away from sheet one and just get rid of this for a second, what you'll see is we've got the house 4.8 kilowatts grid tie, 20 solar panels, 440 watts. We've also got the weather here. Now this is kind of a, a variation of um, it might be sunny, it might be kind of sunny, cloudy. It's 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 kind of in between. And some of them obviously I've put sunny, wet, where I've noticed noticed it's a really wet day, and then I've got wet, wet, wet. So that's kind of a uh, an idea about what this side of the um, the spreadsheet means. Obviously we've got the dates, so this is obviously our current date um, and then falling back for the last week, or for the last month, and this is only looking at our 4.8 kilowatts from our solar system on the main house roof. It's not taking into consideration the 1.4 that's on the garage that's charging the power wall. This is only looking at the main house roof, and there's some really good reasons why we're looking at that in this video today at least. Um, mainly one, because it's easier to look at, but also two, um, most people only have one size system and if it's a 5 kilowatt system, which is on average for most people is actually quite large, um, a lot of house install, a lot of installations are 3 kilowatt hour or 3 kilowatt system. So this is 4.8, but it will give you a bit of an idea about how much power you need to be able to get through a month, at least in winter or getting close to winter. So that being said, 
these are the days, this is how much power we've made per day. So 18.5 kilowatts, 20 kilowatts, blah, blah, blah. We had some really wet days. Obviously, if it gets really, really wet, we're not going to produce much power at all. So there's our 3.2s. Um, which is actually the lowest I've seen. I think last year the lowest was four point something, so we're a little bit lower this year. Um, we got some really sunny days here, and we've got some, uh, again, wet days. A majority of the last month, obviously it's coming into winter, well, it's pretty much winter, um, we've got lots of wet days all in a row. So this whole week, wet days. Um, we had a couple of sunny days. This one here was kind of a uh, this one here was kind of a sunny, cloudy day. So whether that counts, we still made 15.9 kilowatt hours. So that's quite good. Um, but majority of the time, we've had lots of wet days. Now this is the problem when you're obviously looking at um, winter time and how the solar responds in winter. These numbers obviously in summer would be in the 30s, but in winter they're all the way down to 3.2. So that's an interesting number in, uh, in itself. However, the most interesting is how much excess power we've got. So this is kind of what we're exporting to the grid. And while why this is so important is that if you've got a solar system that's obviously on your house, you've got an inverter and you're charging your batteries with it, well, what you're charging your batteries with is what you would be exporting if you didn't have batteries, right? So this 4.8 kilowatts we've got here, isn't got ba uh, hasn't got batteries connected to it. So this will give you an idea that if you did have batteries connected to it, how much power you'd be putting into your batteries each day, obviously in winter. In summer, the batteries will be charged most of the time, so it's not a problem. In winter, it's a real big problem. So obviously in our first day, 18.5 kilowatt hours, we've got an excess of 5.5. Excellent, that means we can at least charge half the power wall from the night before. Remember, in winter, we pretty much go through the whole 10 kilowatt hours. So if you've got a 10 kilowatt hour power wall, you'll go through that the whole night. No problems at all. Um, or at least, unless you're really cautious about not turning on a heat pump or not doing um, things inside the house at night. Majority of the time for us, what I'm finding, three bedroom house, four people or three people, um, we need to, we're pretty much using the, the nine point something kilowatt hours to 10 to 11 some nights. So with that in mind, have a look at some of these numbers. So what we've got here, 5.5, obviously half charge the power wall. 5.1, half charge the power wall. 7.9, cool, we're almost fully charged if we were to be using that power to charge. Now obviously in this situation we're not, but if we were, um, that's how much power we've got left. This day here we've got two kilowatt hours left over. So if we use the power wall on this night, then there's gonna be no power left the next day to charge the power wall. So what you'll see is what I'll bring into on, on the spreadsheet here. It's exactly the same sheet, same numbers. But what you see is that what I've got is I've got the power wall listed here and I've got whether the power wall is able to be turned on that night or not. And what you'll see is on a winter month, on the first day we've got power. The second day we haven't able to, able to charge it much, power wall's off. Third day, We've had a good day of sun, the power will get to be turned back on again because we're able to charge it. However, this is the worrying factor. And remember that this is with 4.8 kilowatts of power, so if you've uh, of solar panels. So if you've got less solar panels than this, then these days here in particular, you'll find that you won't be able to use the power wall. So if you have a look at these numbers, and this is really when it's quite surprising, and this is why I really wanted to make a video on it. Out of this whole month period here, in the last month, if we were to have a look at just using the power of the 4.8 kilowatts of solar to charge the power wall and to run the house, which is what you'd normally do, you're only able to be you're only able to use the power wall one, two, three, four, maybe five nights out of the whole month. Now that's really, really interesting, and it's really quite surprising. I would have thought coming into this project that 4.8 kilowatts easily I can be able to charge the power wall during the, the winter months. Um, or at least most of the month, and what I'm finding is that the answer to that is no. So majority, and this is really a, a summary of why. Um, so we've used, if this is on this night, then obviously we're going to use that power the next day. Two kilowatt hours um, that we've got on excess is not enough to charge a 10 kilowatt hour power wall. We've got eight remaining. So that pretty much means the power wall's off that night. Next night, still off, we've only put um, 0.8 back into it. Still off, only point one, uh, 1.7 and 1.3. So obviously it takes a long time 
it was so many days of wet days before we were able to get to back to 10 kilowatt hours. At 10 kilowatt hours, we've got because we've had a good day of sun, the power will can come on that night. It's used these nights to be able to charge it pretty much over a week and a half there. And then obviously the next day was a pretty crappy day. We didn't have a lot of solar. In fact, it was actually not too bad. 15.9 um, is not too bad in the winter. Um, and But we've only got 1.5 excess. So that means if we had power, if we're charging the power wall, 1.5 excess, that's not going to charge 10 kilowatt hours. So we're short by 8.5. Again, we're going to have to wait pretty much another week before we can use that power wall again. And as we see down here, 4.7, oh sorry, 5.7, we can obviously, with that plus these numbers here, we're back to about a 10 kilowatt hour. Now we can turn the power wall back on again. Um, so obviously that means we're charging the power wall all the way up and then discharging it. But I thought at least that way I can at least explain it the simplest. Obviously, if you put 3 kilowatts into the power wall, you could potentially take out the 3 kilowatts. But whether you take it out or you save it up until you've ch fully charged it and then take it out, it really doesn't make any difference. Um, because if you're only putting in 1.8, uh, it's such a little bit of power that it'll be gone within half an hour when it can, if it did turn back on. So this kind of gives you a really, really good idea about how big a system that you need to be able to charge your power wall in the winter months. Now, this is only June in um, New Zealand. It's coming into it. It's kind of wintry. It's it's not too cold um, yet. We've had some cold days, but you kind of get the idea about where I'm going with this video. What you'll see is that obviously I've got my five, uh, my four point eight. Later, if I was, for example, if I add on the one point four that's sitting on the garage roof, then obviously I'll have um, a lot more, but or 6.2 or whatever it works out to be. However, you'll still see that that yes, that might increase my some of these days. I might be able to turn the power wall on earlier, which is fantastic. But it still means majority of a winter month, with even with trying to charge 10 kilowatt hours with 6.2 kilowatts of of solar available, it's just not going to be possible. So when I when I mentioned earlier in the video about um, putting more solar panels on the roof. This is why. Because if you if you only had three kilowatt hours and you've got a 10 kilowatt hour power wall, then 90% of the month it's going to be flat. You're just not going to be able to charge it. Um, mainly because your your inverter or your what your solar is doing is it's not just charging your battery storage so that you can use it at night. It's doing everything else during the day then at whatever's left is charging the, your power wall or battery storage. If that's kind of the priority. The priority needs to be run the house appliances, then charge, if there's anything left, don't export it, put it into battery storage. So it's kind of the secondary thing. And that's, that's why we can look at this data here and say, if I'm exporting it, but if I had batteries connected to it, then whatever I'm exporting will go to batteries. And then obviously we'll see we're not exporting very much in winter months, in which case we're not going to be charging a power wall in winter months, in which which case we're still going to be buying power because the battery is going to be sitting flat most of the time. And when you're thinking about how many solar panels to put on the roof, and you live in a climate that will at least, um, if it does get sunny, or if you have kind of rainy days and it's not so bad, then at least you're putting more and more back into, this, into the power wall. The other thing that I thought I'd mention is that when you do get to a sunny day, for example, you do get to this day here, or for example, you get to this day here after you've had four or five days of really crappy weather, if you've got lots of solar panels, you'll be able to charge that power wall or run the house, but also charge that power wall much, much faster. Because sometimes you might only have one or one and a half days of um, of sun before it starts to become rainy again. So you really want to be able to maximize as much as you can and charge and run as many um, things locally inside the house. Obviously do your dishes, do your washing and all those other bits and pieces, but also charge your power wall back up to full so that you can use it again. If you had less solar, like three kilowatt, uh, like three kilowatts of solar, then obviously you're not going to be able to do all those things within a day and the next day is rainy. So you kind of lost out. So by having more solar, it kind of really helps. So I hope that helps to understand what I was meaning from my last video. Also kind of puts things into a bit more context because looking at this, if I had power wall of my power wall charging on my 
um, grid tie in the house, I'm not going to be able to charge it. Uh, at least the use the usage that I get over the month. As you see here, we've got about four or five days that is actually usable of the power wall. We can have a massive battery system if we like, and yes, if we had 20 or 30 or 40 kilowatts of, of battery storage, we might get down to, to this day here after a full charge, but we've still got all these days that we can't charge it, there's just not enough sun. And again, if you had 30 or 40 kilowatts of solar on a power, sorry, if you've got 30 or 40 kilowatts of power and um, of store battery storage, then you still need to have the time to put that back in, and you need enough panels to be able to put that back in fast enough before your next day of rain. So, hope that kind of uh, makes some of you, um, I suppose, think about how, uh, what size solar system you might need, what size battery system you might need. Obviously, a smaller system will charge um, quicker, we won't need to put as much in, but it's not going to get you through the night. So there's lots of things to consider, but I hope this video really helps. Um, and do your own calculations, figure out what your usage is, figuring out, uh, figure out what size solar you've got, how much you can put back into a battery, and um, and go from there. But what I'll do, my next video after this will look at my Powerball. I kind of put this video in between to kind of show what I was meaning about a couple of things. and. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.